I got an interesting story coming from South Carolina where police feel like, eh, if we can't do civil asset forfeiture, it's not really worth policing, is it? So in this case, we have the South Carolina civil asset forfeiture laws are incentivizing people, incentivizing police to do this. Now, I want to give a little context for those of you that don't know what civil asset forfeiture is or just heard it and don't know the details. The idea is that if I'm a police officer, I can pull you over and if you have a bunch of cash with you, I can go, well, you're clearly a drug lord, so I'm gonna just confiscate that cash and I don't actually have any evidence to convict you. So you're not gonna be convicted, but your cash is under arrest and we're gonna take this and the perverse incentive that we're dealing with here is that Police keep that and it usually goes into a few dollars go into the officer's pocket and then the rest of it go out to um, the police station so that they can get these fancy guns, they can get um, all these cool little toys. I remember one time a place got a Margaritaville machine and in context of how much money is this actually countrywide, uh, police take more money from citizens under civil asset forfeiture than all burglaries, robberies, you know, private citizen theft combined. The only thing that's a larger theft uh, from the middle and lower class in America is actually wage theft by corporations, which is the largest group. But this is the second largest theft. Again, third being all civilians stealing from each other. Second largest civil asset forfeiture. So what's happening here? So in this case, we have uh, police officers uh, using this kind of logic to deal with uh, uh, these laws and or the threat of them being repealed. What is the incentive to go out and make a special effort? And what is the incentive for indication? So what they're basically saying uh, throughout the article in those quotes is that why would we collect drugs? Why would we seize drugs? Why would we do our job if we aren't able to take money from the citizenry? So going a little further, in 19% uh, of the cases, there's no arrest. So no one's arrested. They just took your money and sucks to be you. And then the other, 71%, uh, and this is in South Carolina again, 71% of the seizures have been from the African-American population. So we're not a surprise to people that follow American law for a while. So now here's the issue that when you have civil asset forfeiture, again, you're not under arrest, your money is. So you have to actively prove in a guilty until proven innocent sort of way that your money was not involved in civil asset, which is hard to do with cash. So the other issue is that if you want to actually fight this and make a deal of it, you have to have a, <clears throat> get a lawyer, go through a whole series of events now, the issue with that is that the cost of getting a lawyer and doing all of that is almost always more in terms of value than what they actually took is worth. So if you have I don't know, $500 taken from you by the police, you're not going to go and spend $10,000 to have a lawyer argue that you legally had $500 and it's not worth the cost. It's 20 times as much as it, what they stole. So most of the time, in fact, in 75% of the times, the money is just kept and they get their Margaritaville and whatnot. So the police have these stories, hey, we can't, we can't do these things, they weren't budgeted. Mm -hmm. Let's get to a point in America where the police simultaneously will do their jobs regardless of how much money they're taking from private citizens to a point where if they have any budget shortfalls, right. that they don't have to steal money from private citizens to deal with it. But Daniel, how are they gonna get all their margarita machines? Exactly. And then <laughs> on top of that, we have to at its core, stop treating the police as a source of revenue collection. That's the huge issue. There's there's something here I wanna bring up. I actually just brought them in the comment section. Um, uh, Mason uh, D. Ross, he mentioned this. I think uh, it would solve the civil uh, what would solve the civil asset uh, forfeiture if just one detail changed: the burden of proof on the police to prove you are a criminal, instead of the burden of proof on you to prove that you aren't. Well, and you're absolutely but, correct. But, but no, the wait, problem is, is you you, you, you you have to reform the system. Well, but what's the, the issue? issue? Is no one's under arrest. It's not you that is innocent until guilty. It's your money. And even if that was the case, even if it was flipped mm -hmm. to be innocent until proven guilty. 
we see what that is what that is in the system. We have right. people that are put in jail all the time who are innocent because they can't afford a lawyer. This all goes back to the cost of representation and the police initiating this in the first place. So you can, right. you can say that if police didn't do civil asset forfeiture, you wouldn't need to have a lawyer to fight this anyway, right. which is a true statement. So, 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 so but even if it was innocent until proven guilty, you'd still have to use a lawyer. Right. So there's actually something I do want to bring up because this reminds me of a story that we covered uh, not last summer, but I think the, the second summer, like on, because we've been around for two years. And it reminds me of when we were at a law firm in which they exonerated 15 African-American men who were constantly harassed in Chicago by a squad of four police officers uh, who were forcing them to admit to crimes or, uh, you know, be, uh, be basically held in possession of illegal activities or were forced to do illegal activities or they were threatened to be, threatened to be sent into jail because the police have such unchecked power here in Chicago. And so this is a, not only a South Carolina problem, but this is a national problem that's impacting thousands upon th millions of people because the United States is the mo has the most incarcerated population in the free world. And so we have a long way to go before we even have a chance to really reform the system. And the only way we can reform the system is if more people get actively involved. So, um, you know, this, this is a story that we're going to follow up on. And I can guarantee you this, there's, there's going to be another story similar to this, either in South Carolina or in another state. But I can guarantee you this, Heartland's media is going to talk about and cover it. Hey, did you like that video? Well, guess what? You could subscribe to our YouTube channel, hit that ring bell notification, and that way you get updated when we upload content to our YouTube channel. And if you really like what we do, please check out our website, hardlensmedia.com. There you can find our other social media sites like Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, Spreaker. And if you really want to support independent media, we have a Patreon page.